Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. It is the first podcast of the decade. Oh, it is. That's right. I think in 10 years from now, when we're global superstar sensations, we'll probably repost this episode and say, look at the first podcast of the last decade for 2030. I don't think we will. I think we might. But look at how stupid we sounded. <laughs> look at we back when we were broke and stupid. <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, Broke here we are. Broke is a very relative term. Well, that's what I'm saying. When we're that rich, 10 yeah. years from now, this is going to be broke. Okay. We'll be like, gosh, we used to fly commercial. <laughs> yeah, that Peasants. I would say I would laugh at. Yeah. Flying commercial is disgusting. I think that's the big leap, you know? Yeah. When you're really flying private. Yeah, because like, besides like a bigger house and whatever nicer things, the biggest convenience of wealth yeah. It's flying private. If you're a full-time private flyer, you're Very another rich. level rich. Yeah. Okay, well, we all got to have goals and New Year's resolutions and all that fun stuff. I'm headed in with uh, flying private by the end of the decade. I like that. You know what else I noticed? I don't know if maybe I'm just in a bubble here. Um, probably. Probably. And also I'm surrounded by, um, by people that are constantly setting goals and doing challenges and stuff, some for better, some for worse. Yeah. But I don't really notice any New Year's resolution talk in public just in my or, life or even on my instagram or like when you're talking to people in general you yeah, know like I, mean? I have not really heard of any new year's resolutions anywhere in my that's universe true. i don't, I don't know if, if that's like a social media i think resolutions are over well, thank god can I, can I say something please i made a new year's resolution last year to be on the group chat pod this year oh you got it no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay well look look you made it i'm here so i mean we should set resolutions no i think so and i'm also looking forward to 10 years time to being on the first pod of the new decade yeah. 2030 yeah. and flying private with us yeah exactly you know what i'm saying well, i was i was actually going to say i flew private here but I already lived here, so that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I see. And, and I'm talking about, like, I, you need full time. Uh, my goal is that the first pod of 2030, we do from the jet. Oh, midair. Yeah, like on our way back from New Year's, uh, probably in, like, the south of France or something. New Year's south of France is not where you want to be. Okay, sorry, I'm not that rich yet, man. Where do I? If we're go? coming from St. Barts or something, that's different. Okay, St. Barts, we're coming from St. Barts. See, <laughs> it's freezing cold in the south of France. I'm gonna laugh at that in ten years. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ha -ha. What was that place Rice went to? The Armengari. That, Armengari. That looks okay, maybe pretty we'll hot. Go there. That's nice. Yeah, it's cold. It's cold. Yeah. Where's that at? Like Utah, or Grand Canyon. Okay. Or All right. Well, either way, whatever. Utah, we'll yeah. come back from somewhere warm and beautiful, yeah. and we'll podcast from the jet. Yeah. Um, so resolutions, mm -hmm. nobody, it's not hitting your radar, right? I, I, I wouldn't say, I mean, you could call it a resolution. I think I'm big on, I did it last year for the first time, which is writing down some goals. Yeah. And I found them to be pretty effective, just holding me accountable all year. And I think this year, you know, I'm in the, I'm kind of still mid process. I'm hoping to get it done by the weekend. But my goal is really to just nail like what my goals are and personal business family and then kind of take a peek at it every few months and see where i'm at yep got it would you have resolutions i don't have resolutions but i do the same thing i set goals i set goals every quarter um so i just it's just kind of an extension of that like sure at the beginning of the year i think maybe i do a little bit more like digging to make sure everything's in line and make sure i'm headed in the right direction for a new year but i definitely don't do new year's like resolutions you know what i mean yeah but yeah um let me ask you this before we get started what about new year's celebrations i noticed you know i was out yeah. uh in la with uh, a lot of our friends yeah i didn't see you i was home i mean i was we started our new year's uh eve celebration at 7 p.m sharp at nice guy uh, we were the second, we were one of two tables that were sitting and eating at the time. You're uh, old. How old was the other table? 80? 
<laughs> uh, 70s? Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> it was two older women just yeah. having an early dinner. <laughs> just a few, few older women trying yeah. to ring in. Golden girls. Yeah. Um, and we sat down. Uh, they have a, you know, like prefix menu, kind of all the stuff I like to eat. It was great. We sat about an hour and a half afterwards. We finished the dinner by like 7.50. Yep. And Brian said, I'll be there at 8.30. Wait for me. I was like, what are we going to do 40 minutes? So he comes in at 8.30 uh, with his wife and some friends. And then around 9-ish, we uh, sauntered over to Delilah. Oh, so you made it over there. I was there. I texted you. I said, come in 10 minutes. I didn't believe you. I, th I thought you weren't there. No, I was there. And then it was 9.00. No, ten fifteen. We were there for a solid forty five minutes. Forty five minutes. And then it was a zoo in there. Zoo. I just I mean, it was so many people. It was obviously looked like it was gonna be crazy. Yeah. And then I just walked we walked we walked out, got in bed. I watched uh, Anderson Cooper and I think Andy Cohen on CNN. They were Anderson Cooper was just hammered. He was a mess. It's funny that they do that. Remember yeah. the Kathy Griffin, Anderson Cooper yeah. one? Like they, they just allow them to get wasted on they, the air? They, he was so like, he was terrible. It seems he like was, a liability. Why yeah, would they allow that? Yeah. Uh, and then I just flipped through. I saw like some Post Malone performance on one channel, some other nonsense Gosh. on another channel. It's, so you had the same New Year's Eve as my parents? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even stay up. Did you see the ball drop? No, we'd sleep at 11. Oh my gosh. What is, what's up with you? You used to be my most fun friend. Here's the thing is that I knew I had promised Dom a hike. Yeah. He was like hiking, hiking, hiking. So we got up at whatever, 6.45, 7, got him, gave him a little food and went for a hike at 7.30 in the morning. On New Year's Day. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way I could do that if I was yeah. black. So let, let me ask you two things. Two, right. Coming from the UK, I've yeah. been here four New Year's Eves now, I think. Uh -huh. What is it? I don't know if it's an LA thing. As soon as midnight hits, 15, 20 minutes later, people start leaving. Have you noticed that? You know why? Because nobody likes New Year's Eve. It's stupid. Ah. I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> it's literally the dumbest... You would not have said that three years no, ago. No, I enjoy, I enjoy traveling and being gone. But like the concept of... This time where everyone's like, five, four, three, two, one. It, it's just fucking stupid. Well, I just want to point out, because we're talking about changes. Three yeah. years ago, if I would have said, I'm going to stay home. No one really cares about New Year's Eve. You'd be like, you are an idiot. Yeah. Get out here. We're yeah, going know, to Brazil. We just decided today. <laughs> yeah, but that was different. Hour. If you're going somewhere and making a trip and vacation out of it, I get it. It's the time to do it because it's just quiet. Yeah. My, my point is the concept of... New Year's Eve, midnight, is it's no different than any other night, which yeah. I think well, everyone agree that, with that. That's why, that's what it, we found hard to understand, right? It's, it feels like as soon as midnight hits, it's like you say, everyone's like, okay, great, I'm going home. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas in the UK, midnight hits, and then it's like someone's turned the volume up to 10. Everyone's going, right, yeah. how hammered can we get? Well, as UK is more, there's just a lot more alcoholics there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you, you guys have serious. You don't want to go outside. It was seventy-one <laughs> degrees on New Year's Day here. You know, seventy-one yeah. degrees sunny. It would not cloud in the sky. It was I, kind of perfect. I think here there it just everyone divides at midnight because there are the people that They're when midnight rage. hits go crazy. Yeah, and then there are the people that just kind of came out for like the the ball drop. Yeah, like the thing. I don't know. It's just like something that you do, and you say you were out. You had a glass of wine. Everyone cheered. You kissed your loved one. You yeah. went home. Um, but because where I at Delilah, where I was at, it actually felt slow and like kind of weird. And like there was a live singer, which wasn't like the vibe. And I was like, ah, oh, this feels kind of weird. And then right at midnight, like DJ, DJ. went on, Kylie Jenner is partying, yeah. Kate Beckinsale. It's just like, whoa, where did this come from? <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden okay. you're in like a whole different place. Yeah. So, so next year, I'm coming out with you then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah things back. changed. I'm the healthy, fun one now. Yeah. <laughs> and Dee's the one in bed at 10 p.m. <laughs> Roles have reversed. It really has. I just didn't want to dread having a long, long day. Yeah, I get it. You have responsibilities now. Yeah. 
If I didn't have to wake up, I would have gotten blackout drunk like everybody else. Yeah, I understand. I'm sure Pete was stumbling down Fountain Avenue. <laughs> you you wish. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I literally was actually home all night. I didn't do a single thing. Really? I was asleep before midnight. Jeez. I can't count on anyone these days. Me and Luke. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't count on me, you're fucked. I'm moving the drama. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, so yeah, so I was at Delilah. After the the the, the ball dropped, everyone was going nuts. Uh, Kylie Jenner was raging. Um, it was just, they crush it. I mean, I, I just, I think that I'm constantly surprised over and over again at how much they just dominate nightlife yeah. in LA. It's ridiculous. And how every, t it never fails. Like there's always some weird, super celebrity, crazy. Oh, what's even crazier, on Sunday night, I, after the pod, Eric and I end up at Delilah yeah. for jazz night. I'd never been to just Sunday night jazz night. I went probably when it was at Guy's like 15 years ago, but mm -hmm. I haven't gone out on a Sunday night in so long. Yeah, this thing is slammed. It's one of the uh, one of the guys that own the Lakers. Every Laker is there, like mm -hmm. all of them, I think, except King. Mm -hmm. It's across the table is Little Nas X just hanging out. I mean, wow. it's just like the whole thing is just star studded. You saw Little Nas X. I saw him. Wow. Green puffer. Sheesh. Yeah. Just a hero of our time. Yeah. And it's just, it's crazy. It's just a Sunday night. And it's the weird week, too, where everyone's gone out of town. Yeah. And the place is more star studied than ever. Yeah. I, I'm sure every week it's like that. Okay. Well, that was our New Year's. Okay, let's talk about this now. Apparently, we don't do New Year's resolutions. But what we do do is start off the very first month of the <clears throat> year with your guys' freaking run challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't wait till February, like let everyone kind of get a slow start. No, because like you, you just came off the diabetes challenge in December. Yeah, how'd that be, go, by the way? Anyone? A lot of, a lot of takers, actually. Yeah. I got a lot of DMs. Okay. Because, you know, I'm not much of a runner. Sign me up for D31. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you just, you kind of feel like a piece of shit on New Year's Day. Most yeah. people. Yeah. Right? Like. You've been eating, binging, you know, holiday food, drinking, partying. So it's a great time of the year to just be like, I'm going to snap back into to shape. Because, yep. you know, gyms are usually crowded. You know, people make fun of people for going to the gym on the first day of the year and just getting, like I was, at, we were out in West Hollywood where the Equinox is and the Soul Cycle, and I just mm -hmm. saw all these people with their gym bags. You know, like people are like excited to, to be healthy. Yep. Um, so I think it's important that it's the right time of the year because it gets you, because if you actually do it, you really get, get on track from a health perspective mm -hmm. or you can cruise right into wild card weekend this weekend and booze it up all weekend. <laughs> yeah. That seems like a pretty good option. <laughs> yeah. So we started this run challenge, I think two and a half, two years, two and a half years ago. And the concept was just to walk or run 75 miles in January. And I think I just posted it on social media just to see if anyone else would do it. I think it was October of 2017. I remember just posting and seeing. And all of a sudden, like a shit ton of people also said, oh, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll I, do it. It just got traction really quickly, I think. Yeah. And one of the things I was thinking about is, well, we were in, um, f well, I think we were in Arizona or something and we did we we ran not last year the year before mm -hmm. and this guy came up to us afterwards who ran with us and he said i just want to thank you for doing this challenge i was like well we're just running you know but i'm so glad you're a part of it and i said well why did you say that and he said well i started the challenge the year before did it for the month for the beginning of the month all of my family and friends were looking at me like i was weird why are you running every day and he just stuck with it and at the end of the month he lost a shit ton of weight yeah. a lot he, he looked totally different yeah. and then his friends and family actually realized the change it had made to him physically and mentally and in his life yeah and then they kind of started to think differently as well and I, when he said it to me i was like holy shit wow we're actually impacting people's lives with this now yeah 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 that's really cool how many times a year how many times do you do twice. it twice a year yeah january and july Okay, so we are, what is it, the third? What day is it? Second. It'll be the, the third. Second. Okay, yeah. So how many miles have you ran? I've ran, by the time this episode airs, I would have ran 13 miles. I'm at 
nine because it's technically Thursday, but Friday morning I'll do four miles. Do you go more than 75? So the last time I think I did like just around 75, 80 miles. Mm -hmm. um, the time before I did 100. What I want to do is I like to stack my miles up early. Yeah. Because you've, got, you've got me worried though. That's the thing. Yeah. No, literally. Yeah. I've got FOMO watching you on Instagram thinking, I've only run four and a half with Well, Pete. here's the thing is, is this is the slow week to kind of, for me, yeah. I know that starting next week and the work schedule is normal. Yeah. I'm not going to have time. I can't come to work whenever. So now I'm just like, fuck it. Go Let's go catch these miles now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. And Luke, you're four, four miles in? I'm four and a half in. Um, it's the second. I'll run after here and I'll probably run again tomorrow morning. By the time we hit the weekend, I'm guessing I'll be 15, close to 15. Got it. But the great thing is, and what the, one of the reasons I wanted to come on is, and say is, I want to challenge all of the Cathy's out there, yeah. whoever's listening, to think, hey, 75 miles sounds like a lot, but if you go and walk and run, do a mixture, by the end of the month, you'll feel completely different. Yeah. You, you spoke about resolutions at the beginning. I think that if somebody does it and has never done it before, it will change everything in their life. Yeah, yeah and I, I agree. And I think th what people don't realize is it is kind of a gateway drug too. Yeah. You're going to start realizing so many people that have come to the run club, they literally couldn't run or walk a mile, and now they're doing marathons and yeah. Ironman. Yeah, and uh, a guy, Jake from our run club came up to me on New Year's Eve just before midnight, and he went, I want to thank you and Dee and the Grand AC Run Club because I've just signed up for the LA Marathon, and if it hadn't been for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, good luck with that one, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole Don't different thing. Don't shit your pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's the, it's 2.4 miles a day. Yeah. That's, That's not a lot. That Let me tell you a story a about lot. running. Yeah. I've been working out a lot. Yeah. You know, work out three <laughs> days a week with weights. I started boxing. Now I box two days a week. Yeah. Super heavy cardio. Yeah. I was like, oh, for sure I can run like a lot now. Yeah. And over the break, you know, I wasn't in the gym for a week and a half. So I'm like, well, I'll just go downstairs and run. On the treadmill. Yeah. I, I mean, I ran. It started to get kind of hard. It started to get full on miserable. I was like, I'll go a little bit longer. <laughs> push it as far as I could possibly Seven push minutes. it. I ran for 0.9 miles. <laughs> Point, that's nearly a mile. Yeah. That's nearly. good. <laughs> nearly that's one good. whole mile. All that. I gave it all I got. Oh my God, it's it amazing. Is tough, well, man. That, I, that's why I like running outside. One, it's obviously fun if you know everyone's welcome to join the run club. It's fun running in a group. But even when I run outside by myself, because of I run in my neighborhood, I run into people all the time. Yeah. And I'm so like, self-conscious of people seeing me walk mm -hmm. that i'm you can't stop running i, I know and i pick up the pace <laughs> and i just like fuck this yeah because someone will s scream my name like, yeah, i saw some, mike amiri posted you yeah he was he was he was eating at chibo and he saw me running right by did he actually we, catch you or did you loop back around and no he he hey, mike, 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 wow. mike, mike film this i'm gonna go around the <laughs> that's <laughs> what i thought no <laughs> yeah that's I what it looked when like i got home i'm like oh are you at chibo and he's like yeah okay that's funny Okay, but well, sorry, you actually owe us a run I drama. Do. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. Part of why I went down there on the treadmill is I was like, let me just see if I could make the three miles that you guys do on Saturdays. It's going to be rough. I think that maybe with a group and on the streets, like a treadmill seems like pure torture. Here's the thing. If you came, first of all, a lot of people would be very excited. You'd be talking to like 45 people while you're running. Yeah. You won't even know. The time will just pass. Okay. I've got a solution for you. Max and I have just moved to Doheny, right? Yeah. If you run with us, it's a mile and a half to Doheny from where we start. We can set it up so it looks like you're running with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and then you track off to the left. Yeah, I like that. You can s Catch sneak off and take an Uber home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like you'll that. be in the picture at the start. Yeah. You'll, all, you'll be good. Oh, you do the picture at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. You just I thought you had to make it the three miles to get the I've thing. gone and just taken the picture before. That's good. Okay, well, more power to you guys and to everyone who does this. I think it's a great thing, and I think that, like, the using, the fact that you, like, D, you've talked a lot about becoming famous and all that stuff, but using a brand and social media to actually help improve people's lives is a really cool thing. Yeah, it's interesting. And um, it's funny how, like, 
I don't know. We say this about the pod. Like, it's funny how much people are impacted by the podcast and the stuff we talk about on it. It's funny how much just a little bit of support from like a satellite community yeah. can help someone actually like push them over the edge to go, uh, you know, make a life change. Yeah. That makes such a big difference. That's I, the one thing I noticed, once again, to, to just quickly double up on my Ohio conversation is there's just like also a lack of support in these places. Like if you're yeah. the guy that says, hey man, you want to start running? Everyone's gonna be like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And to have someone even remotely that you see on social media that feels like you're a part of the community, it, it's pretty cool how like impactful that can DM be. DM me if anyone from Ohio who's doing the run challenge. Yeah, there's gotta be someone. <laughs> there's a couple people from Indiana, like really cold places yeah. that have sent me videos. I'm like, damn, it's cold. I did it, I did it last year in January in yeah. Wisconsin. And but, so I would like run outside and I only could get like a mile and a half too because it's so icy. It's like I had to run slower. I was about yeah. like a two minutes slower pace because I, it was icy. And That's, what do you do? Like if you're in back in Ohio, do you... Treadmill. Yeah. But I'm saying, do I um, do it? Do I send you videos? Like how do I really participate? Yeah. I mean, yeah. all you do is you use like, I use the Nike Running yep. Club app. Uh, if you put that, uh, put the phone or you have the watch on and you keep it in your pocket, it tracks on a treadmill. Got it. So you can run on a treadmill. If you run outside, obviously, I just carry my... Actually, today's... Uh, I was listening to Short Story Long with Jay Shetty today. Nice. Yeah. Do you feel enlightened? Well, it's funny because you guys were talking about how you did three uh, three workouts a week, the both of you guys. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this guy must be in good shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we work out together. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? That's what he's saying. Yeah. That <laughs> was in the beginning of the pod. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's in good shape um and then you send it in you just and is there any like um is there a prize so the uh, everyone who completes emails run at the menlohouse.com sends your miles we're gonna send them a hoodie oh, nice. that we're designing just for this nice and then so that'll kind of be your badge of honor and then one winner the last two years we've given cash out 2500 bucks actually same guy twice that's uh, who ran the most? Yeah, yeah. which is like 500 miles, some absurd amount of miles. But this year, we're going to mix it up. Uh, winner gets flown out to LA. Wow. Two nights. Wow. Office, trip, group chat live, the whole experience. And how do you make sure that someone isn't turning on the run app and birding 75 miles? So you, you, if you go that fast, you, the, the oh, you have to keep it like a yeah. 10 like minute mile. This, yeah. on, on New Year's Eve, I went for a run with Dom yeah. in the stroller, and I had a thing. It clock is zero miles for me because it was had, in the stroller we have had a few people that that have sent in miles and you you, you can, can tell. tell yeah you're looking at well he, he just ran a 10 minute mile and then a four minute mile yeah hang on a minute <laughs> yeah that okay but to just to finish that off we're going to be running uh, around the country this month as well so we, we're going to be run, not just in la every saturday with the grand ac run club but yep. we'll be running in orange county with Kevion and Paul Ripke, friends nice. of the pod. Nice. Uh, we'll also be running in San Diego, Dee's favorite city. Yeah, I'm a big San Diego guy. We'll You're be running. Get beat up down <laughs> <there>. <laughs> we'll be running in Tacoma with our guys EJ and the Tacoma, Tacoma Run Club, uh, and Seattle, maybe New York. Uh, s we'll probably go to Santa Monica one one day this month. Yeah. That's all any? this month. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, you really set up January to be tough for yourself. Yeah, huh? it's a rough month. Gosh, <laughs> you're on tour like a freaking musician. Because <laughs> I'm making no money, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, I've, and you know, a lot of these places, the tequila isn't as good. Yeah, yep. that's a problem. Yeah, I go to restaurants and like, do you have Casamigos? Do you have any? no? Wow, we have Patron. Yeah, Patron. Would you like some Patron, sir? <laughs> we have Don Julio, the regular shit. Oh man. Okay, well, no one wants the regular shit. That'll be your next change, the tequila challenge. The tequila challenge. Yeah. Let's just bring Casamigos wherever we go. Yeah, we just need to bring our own tequila. Bring it to the people. Yeah. You can't, can you can't, you can't hand carry tequila though. Shh. Liquid. You have to pack it pack it on the plane. There's smart there's yeah. smart ways you can do it. Maybe you could check a bag in. You could be responsible for that. I put it but in I'm not waiting for you bottle. for a check bag. <laughs> if you get, if you get uh, 50 mouthwash bottles <laughs> of the travel size. <laughs> I have 51 ounce shots yeah. of tequila. Yeah. <laughs> That would work. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen, uh, I think it's a great thing that you guys are doing. And Luke, thank you for coming on to help explain. Thanks for having me. Of course. And uh, I promise, maybe not this month, I promise this year <laughs> I'll make it to <laughs> you one. You couldn't even make the promise. Uh, do you know what? I'd actually like in July when we do it again, yeah. we should go to Ohio yeah. and run with your family. Oh, oh let's yeah, do it. That could be cool. Yeah. 
We should do it. I don't Ackland. know who's running three miles there, though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the king will be home. <laughs> we could run past the king's house. Yeah, I'll take you We should you there. meet in front of the king's we, house. We could probably run from the king's high school to the king's house. Yeah. The, the king run. Yeah. Okay. Done. Let's think about it. Okay. All right, guys. Um, we ready for some news? Yeah. Let's talk. Let's first obviously jump in. I think, you know, first pot of the year, we should start with just some good fun news with some pop culture. What's going on? The first thing is Justin Bieber is back on the scene. Hot. He's been real active on the gram. Um, he posted, uh, I don't know, to me it seemed kind of cryptic, but it looked like there was like new songs coming, maybe a new album coming. Yeah. And then a really interesting thing is uh, like a docu-series, a documentary or something? Yeah, it looks like a song is coming out today nice. called Yummy. In two weeks, looks like there's a 10-part YouTube docu series in two weeks. That's gonna kind of talk about the last couple of years, and then I guess this new album. Okay. I I love that it's on YouTube too, because that's where kind of he started. Yeah. And so full circle, he's back, kind of where it all began, and I mean he's married to Haley Bieber. He's richer than shit. Uh, I'm sure he's doing a world stadium tour. Mm -hmm. Uh. It's going to be fun to watch. I'm curious to see what the music sounds like, too. Because now he's an adult. What do you think? I, I'm going to be honest. I like the Biebs and, and his whole yeah. thing. I'm kind of worried about. Like, uh, his last couple music things haven't been that good. I think, I don't know about the single, the yummy situation. <laughs> yeah. But I think he's going to have your fire Travis Scott record, your fire Post Malone record. Like, he's going to have all those yeah. And they're going to be bangers. Like they're going to he's going to have those like big club records. It just he just has everything at his disposal. Yeah. That I think he's going to have the music to kind of back it up. I um I really wonder. I am curious if I this I think this will be the defining. Well, this will be the moment of can he take the time off? Can he truly transition to like an adult? Like JT Kenny JT himself, or did he get rusty? Because I don't know. I mean, I think his last big, big hit run was with Diplo and yeah. Skrillex, which from what I heard, that was those were old vocals that they remixed into a hit song. Wow. They built the beat around throwaway vocals. Wow. Since then, he's had some flops. Yeah. I don't know. I just think like if, if this one flops hard, if the tour, if he starts canceling dates because... Yeah. Tickets aren't selling as good as they thought. Here's the thing. I, I agree with that part. I just, you know, when I went on social media, when he started talking about this album and YouTube and I went and saw the trailer, his fans are still psychotic. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, I think it would take, it would take one more run. Yeah. In my opinion of like a disaster, two disaster albums to be like, whoa, this guy's irrelevant. But if he, he just needs what? two good songs yeah yeah you know he just needs one 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 monster I mean, that one jack U song yeah lasted him two years yeah yeah i agree he just needs one song he i hope he's i hope he's hip to tiktok i think it's a it'll be a post malone record you want to know a good conspiracy theory yeah if anyone's bored out there uh youtube uh search uh justin bieber whatever justin bieber post malone it'll come up uh that Post Malone's uh, singing voice is exactly Bieber's, like slowed down and auto tuned. And the conspiracy is that all of his songs are actually uh, Justin Bieber singing for him. And it's really funny. Oh my God. It's that, like dead that off. Is, that is it? Yeah. Like you have that to look it up. That sounds insane. You have to look it up after this. It is hilarious. <laughs> it's literally dead on. Um, I agree. I think Post Malone will carry him, which is insane. And I think Travis will give him a hot record. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. But I love the idea of the docuseries. I wish, I don't understand. It seems like YouTube is trying to make this run into more quality content. Yeah. I, I don't know why they don't do more shit like this. Like, why aren't you outbidding Netflix yeah. for these type of things? I, but here's the thing is, I don't want to watch Six Underground on YouTube. I want to watch. No, no, not movies. No, but I want to watch like a docuseries, right? That still feels raw. It, to me, they got to find, they need to find like the Will Smith thing where it's still like vloggy. But like someone big. But imagine if Bieber 
vlogged style film, like himself going to church, himself working out, whatever he's doing, preparing for the new tour in the studio, cut that in with old footage, told the story in a vlog style docuseries, Sick. eight parts, released every Tuesday. That'd be insane. Maybe that's what this is. Maybe. Okay. Anyway, well, uh, I have high hopes, but we will see. Yeah. Uh, next up, it looks like YG uh, felt the need to, I'm not really familiar with this, but felt the need to apologize for old language, old, old things that he yeah, said. Yeah, on uh, New Year's Day. So YG, LA rapper, good friend of ours. Yeah, I was with him at uh, the Rams game. The Rams game. game. Yeah. I love his music. He, on New Year's Day, said, you know, it's, brought, it's been brought to my attention that uh, some of my old lyrics and music has offended the LGBTQ community. Okay. And uh, I want to apologize. I know, I know better now. Okay. You think maybe you saw something bubbling up? You think it just feels woke? 2020 resolution, be less. Maybe he had like a friend come out. Yeah. And a friend goes in and like, bro, you need to clean up your act, homie. That's what I think. Okay. Well, 2020, I mean, this is real 2020. Like, I would say that of the, I hate this term, but gangster rappers, YG is probably one of the realists. Yeah. If he's putting out some tweets, apologizing for his <laughs> yeah. homophobic language. You okay. know who needs to do that is Eminem, not YG. <laughs> I don't even remember what YG has said. I know exactly what Eminem said because yeah. I know the lyrics to all the songs. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But he can't. <laughs> he just can't. You just got to own it. Yeah. Okay. Dude, right. that's, th that's the problem I have with it is like, I don't think it's fair. So real quickly, I was reading, uh, I listened to that podcast on and recommended with the Mezrich guy. Yep. Uh, Ben what's, the, what's the name of the book? Accidental Billionaires? Accidental Billionaires, which led to the social network. Okay, and then, which is now Bitcoin Billionaires, Correct. which is now uh, about the Winklevi. Yeah. And the, in that, they were talking about, I know we talked about it, uh, the original IMs that Mark Zuckerberg said when he was 18, 19 years old yep. about how he, f how he thought, yep. which is very similar to how he thinks today. And the argument, the, the, the host, Kara Swisher, was arguing with Mezrich. Mezrich was saying, this is how this person thought in his early 20s or whenever he sent it, when he had started Facebook. It's probably how he thinks now. Yep. And the lady was like, well, he was still a young adult at that time. You can evolve your views or whatever. And I think it's tough because when you're young, you're YG, you, you're a rapper, you're making it. You kind of say whatever you want. Yeah. You're just not aware. He probably grew up in a community that wasn't self-aware to this situation. Yeah. He got older. His Obviously, his circle changed. He made money. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shit, maybe I was out of line. Yeah. I think it's okay to evolve your thoughts. Yeah. I don't think it's unfair for people that said something when they were like 20 years old and then now they're 40 that they can't evolve their thoughts. Because so many people... Do you know how many president, uh, presidential candidates have who are probably very qualified, have lost their chance because they said something or did something when they were 30, you yeah. know, 30 years ago. Yeah. I think the scary thing about Zuckerberg, though, is the, only, the thing that's so different is, and kind of what Ben Mezrick was saying, is like it's a window into the mentality yeah. that created a platform yeah. that is now so, so much more powerful than YG, so yeah. much more powerful than yeah. any of those people. So... I mean, more powerful than any politician, I would say. No, he's more powerful than anything on earth. So you have to be more, like, it's more scary. Yeah, that's of, like, how he Did thought. he really evolve? Because, like, here's the thing. If YG secretly still hates gay people, not a big deal. Yeah. It's not really going to change anything. The world will go on. The world will go on, <laughs> yeah. right? Even if he never says it. Yeah. If Zuckerberg still is secretly a power-hungry, um, crazy person, that's a big deal. And I think that's more like the, because when I, I didn't, I didn't realize those, um, those instant messages yeah. i didn't know that yeah. that, that existed and yeah. when i heard about that i was like gosh that's kind of <laughs> sketchy yeah. and when i read in bitcoin billionaires like he kept using the term i'm gonna fuck them in the ear yeah he kept saying that yeah and he said that about the winkle vi. he said that about all these people like why does he want to fuck them in the ear i don't know Was that does that mean just a clarification because I'm, I'm older than him yep uh that is sticking his dick in, in someone's ear someone's ear yeah fuck their ear 
And I think it's is like, that you're fucking a thing? Yeah. I think it is. I'm into it. No, it's not. That's not a thing. That's why it's so ridiculous. <laughs> maybe and I that's think that maybe for yeah, I don't. I mean, I think maybe all this fake news and Donald Trump and all this craziness from Facebook is us all getting fucked in the ear. Yeah. <laughs> he finally got what he wanted. Yeah. He's fucking us in He's the ear. He's literally. He might be going home laughing like, "Yes, I'm finally fucking the world's ear." <laughs> you know, that was his mission statement from day one. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, we got to move on. You want to talk about pot? Yeah. Uh, so. We had some discussions about about pot uh, at the end of the year uh, at our, our wrap up and um, stop calling it pot. It's pot, dude. What's it like nineteen sixty two? It's pot. It's grass. <laughs> you know, reefer. So pot. Uh, you know, the we, we talked about how the IPOs and that stuff were 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 big losers in our minds, but as far as just hand to hand, pot's legal. People want it. It's booming. Couldn't get any hotter. Illinois officially uh, legalized recreational marijuana on January 1st. Uh, there are 37 dispensaries that started selling in uh, Illinois. Nine are in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Big lines. They're saying sales did $3.2 million on its first day. Um, I think the fact that it's taking this long for rec federal law for recreational use is insane yeah so think about california i don't know how many years it's been legal medical marijuana now for freaking Ever. over 10 years yeah uh i saw an article recently in the la times how crime over the last decade in la has dramatically decreased mm -hmm. homicides specifically mm -hmm. like huge drops and that's counterintuitive to what People told you 15 years ago, oh, you're going to make marijuana illegal. Everyone's going to killing each other. This like stereotype of marijuana versus alcohol is just mind blowing to me. Mm -hmm. Like I see people where I literally am worried for them after drinking. Yeah. I've never seen that. He yeah. <laughs> Look at the dumb things he does yeah. on, on alcohol. You don't get high and throw beer on people. <laughs> yeah. No, I really just eat. Yeah. <laughs> didn't do nothing. Yeah. It's 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 scary that it's still taking this long. And I think people need they need to speed this shit up. Speed it up. Yeah. You know what else I've learned is like um from all these things in history, like a lot of it was marketing. Yeah. And and I think like this war on drugs and here's your brain on drugs and this yeah. is what weed does to you and all this stuff. Like it's just really good marketing yeah. to make weed seem so evil. Like somebody has to step in and do some good marketing yeah because also all this like pot marketing yeah you know like i don't want like listen i respect cheech and chong and snoop yeah. dogg and like all the ogs but those aren't the, the people that are going to mainstream it. Yeah, yeah like somebody has to really come out and do some good marketing to change the perception that's why i think someone like as, li as that moment of elon musk smoking marijuana well you know what that does i don't i don't think that's mainstream big but what i think it does is there are a lot of very smart, successful people, young people that yeah. idolize him. And they're like, he normalizes it, yeah. right? Because he is not, he's a functional, highly functional, probably one of the most highly functional adults yeah. living. And he's clearly fine. <laughs> he yeah, we, need, we just need that like got milk moment. Yeah. Got pot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because well, I think- I, I would, Pot is something you put flowers in. <laughs> Got reefer, <laughs> yeah. got grass. I think that like the all, you're having all these little wins, and I think people are kind of knowing, hey, wait a minute, maybe weed isn't that bad. Yeah. Maybe blah blah blah. Like, but you need that like big, large scale. I feel like we're still suffering from really good marketing yeah. saying that weed is so terrible. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, good time to be in the legal pot business. Pot business, you know. <laughs> But maybe not for the big IPOs. No, but uh, interesting, uh, Illinois, how, how powerful it was day one. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, Jewel. Mm -hmm. So I went to Ohio uh, for Christmas, as I talked uh, a lot about, and Jewels were hotter than ever. Didn't I say my, one of my picks for company of the year for 2020 is going to be Jewel? You did? Yeah, because I said there's no way. The valuation got cut in half. The addiction didn't get cut in half. Yeah. It's hot. You know, if I like, could invest privately in Jewel and I had no moral compass, I'd be all in on Jewel. Yeah. You know how like in fashion when a brand is super hot and you walk into like a, a, a store and it's just all in the it, front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shelf space is incredible. Full display. That's how Jewel is in middle America. 
Amazing. It's just racks on racks of pods and just as many jewels as you could possibly. Your little what heart could desire. Or nothing. In Wisconsin? Yeah, it's, uh, it's hot there too. Were you jeweling over the holiday? No. no. <laughs> don't lie to us. I don't jewel. Well, we've heard you get drunk and smoke cigs. No, not cigs. He's okay. full on cigarette I guy. used to I used to smoke cigs here and there. Then jewels came out. Then I used to do jewel, but I don't do jewel. Well, now you're a puff bar guy. Uh, puff bar here and there, but I'm also quitting that. Okay. I'm all out on um, That's your nicotine. New Year's resolution. Yeah. yeah. Resolution. <laughs> Work out more and quit fucking <laughs> soaking down, uh, yeah, nicotine. Okay. Well, it turns out that the, that is the same resolution that they have at the jewel offices, but uh, they're having a problem. They can't get people to stop. <laughs> What's going on? People are just blowing jewel clouds in the office and they can't get them to stop? So in 2018, jewel employees were told to stop using jewels in their offices in New York and California, which they were banned already in workplaces. Mm -hmm. And so people immediately kind of stopped. But now, you know, a year plus later... People are still uh, using them in their offices and on the property. And so the penalty for office vaping, first offense is a warning. Second and third offenses will result uh, cuts in their bonuses. Wow. And that's the interesting thing about that is this company is probably shitting so much cash that everyone gets a bonus. Because you, the fact that you're... You, yeah. That means everyone's like automatically yeah. getting a bonus, yeah. which is amazing. And um, and then if after that doesn't work, uh, you get fired. So this thing uh, uh, is really interesting. Jewel is so addicting that people will sacrifice their bonus yep. to keep vaping. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, though, I kind of think people should be jeweling at the Jewel offices. It's on brand. I mean, don't you think there's a little bit of a discrepancy if people can't use the product that you're selling to millions of people because it's harmful to others in the office? Okay, so, uh, but the problem is the law in the, the two states. Yeah, doesn't the fuck. Okay, so you are create a, like, a jewel safe zone where you get to jewel, yeah, you jewel get to lounge. picnic. Yeah. At like, the office. Do it outside. It has to be outside. Sure. Just have like a little, I mean, it's a jewel. They're rolling in cash. Yeah. They should just have like a nice little glass open ceiling. Yeah. Jewel area. You they can go should, celebrate it, your product. I mean, imagine working at a company. Imagine if we were like, hey guys, you can't wear Young and Reckless in the office because it's harmful to the other employees. Yeah. But man, kids love them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't, I want to walk into the jewel office and have everyone, I want it to so, just be a cloud of jewel smoke. So what I would do is if I ran jewel, I would have this jewel safe zone yeah. work environment with open air. I would make it the coolest part of the office. Yeah. And these are for the real addicts. I don't know if you want to call them addicts. <laughs> Why? Because it has kind of a negative connotation. If you, the real... Lovers. Okay, so if you do something every single day... Then you're a, you're a passionate, you're an evangelist. Okay, but, but it's... These are for the evangelists. Oh, my God. I'm just saying, you don't want to call your people addicts. It sounds kind of like they're crackheads. Okay, I'm not the CEO. I'm just saying from an outsider's perspective. Well, if you're the CEO, you probably want to make them feel empowered by sucking I know, down but, all these jewels. But make it like the coolest, sexiest place in the office where everyone's like, oh, yeah, do you, you don't jewel? You, know, you're not, you don't got the grass and the balcony? Like, yeah. give everyone else no, no windows. Yeah. We just got to work on the name. Okay. Okay, well, either way, I don't, it just seems like... Jewelers. It seems like it's so, obviously it's so addictive. Obviously it's a great product. People love it. It just seems, I don't know. I just feel like when all these stories keep, keep popping up, things are doomed. Yeah, do we'll you, see. Do you think they have uh, unreleased flavors at the Jewel offices? For sure. Oh, yeah. It's like Taco Bell where they have like the, yeah, the, the kitchen. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I bet you you go over there and they just have Oh, everything. yeah. I can't imagine. No, but they don't even know because they're not allowed to smoke them. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, how about some uh, serious world news? Yes. All right, let's start with this. First, we have this Gallup poll um, for the most admired man in 2019. Ooh, who could it be? So, listeners, I'll let you go ahead and take your guesses. It looks like we got a bit of a tie here. Yeah, shocker. Shocker. Uh, number one is former President Barack Hussein Obama. Interesting. Still, still at admired. the top of the list. Yep. Still a few years later, still admired. Top of the list. 
he hasn't even really been out in the press or, or in the news or anything. Mm -hmm. um, still very admired. Tied with Donald J. Trump. Yeah. I mean, if that's not just a perfect representation of... The uh, country. Yeah. I mean, what else would you really expect? 18% of U.S. adults said uh, President Obama. 18% said President Trump. Um, they broke it down. 41% of Democrats said uh, Obama. 2% of Democrats said Trump. Those 2% are kind of odd. Who are those confused? Yeah. Uh, maybe they're like, mistaken. They don't yeah. know what a Democrat is. 12% of the independents, Obama. 10% independents, Trump. And then Trump cut 45% of Republicans as uh, their most admired figure. And 3% of Republicans liked Obama. I'm going to be honest. Um, normally, I think that I would be bummed that they're tied. But the fact that Obama is still tied three years later yeah. without much press is pretty great. I, I think if you really look at, okay, so Donald Trump's the president of the United States. So we know he's going to be admired regardless if you like him or just like him, right? Mm -hmm. People clearly voted for him. He has his fan base. I was looking at the rest of the list the next closest, I think, was Elon Musk, but he had like two less than two percent. Yeah. Um, Jimmy Carter, Bill Gates, Pope Francis. Jimmy Carter, who yeah. the fuck? Who's getting these polls? Old people. Old old people. Yeah. The, the last president they can remember was Jimmy Carter. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me ask you a question. <laughs> who is your most admired man of 2019? Who would be my most admired? I think mine's The Rock. Really? Yeah. He's a great guy. I mean, how are you able to juggle so many things, keep such a good attitude? What is he juggling? I mean, just he's movies. Four fucking Fast and Furious? Yeah. But he has to say 12 words. In. Launching a tequila brand. <laughs> physical fitness. His Under Armour collection. I mean, come on. I think admired... I'm going with the king. Oh, yeah. I should have known that. Yeah. Okay. King James. Because I think it, in, in the, my way of thinking about life is that so many people, there are these great people that have done great things, and then there's people that do great things and live great lives on top of it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that are great to me, I don't admire their life. Yeah. And LeBron has done greatness on his uh, profession. But then what he's done, you know, obviously he has his family. He has the community stuff he's done in Ohio. I remember when we went to the NBA Finals, the way that your cousin Gary spoke about LeBron yeah. was like the greatest fucking thing ever. Yeah. You know, like that, that only happens when you do something for a community. Yeah. Yeah, next level. And I've also never seen, I've never truly seen like the impact that someone can have because some because they came from the same yeah. place. Like yeah. it gives so much hope. Yeah. Like you could maybe do something good because this person came from right by you and yeah. they did something good. What's really interesting, years ago, uh, Jay-Z did an interview. I forgot who it, who it was with. Maybe it was like a Charlie Rose or something like that. And they were questioning why you don't do charity or if you do, why isn't it public? Mm -hmm. Like, and he's like, I do things privately. And there, and then I think Jay-Z was getting irritated and he goes, what you don't understand, he goes, my presence is charity. Mm -hmm. And I was like, at that moment, I was like, man, that's such an arrogant thing to say. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, like him just being Jay-Z yeah. is inspiration. Yeah. And I think... People don't realize that unless you come from a community like Jay-Z did or how LeBron was brought up, yep. where it's like against all odds you make it. Yep. So I think he, those people do give a lot of hope to a lot of people because like you can be, it's, no, it's proven that you could be a great athlete. Mm -hmm. Hard work, genetic gifts, whatever it may be. But it's not proven you could be a great athlete and a great person. Because yep. some of the greatest athletes of our time were kind of pieces of shit. Yeah. Or the greatest people that people admire, as Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg, aren't great people outside yep. of their profession. Yep. Okay. Good. Um, okay. How about this? Yeah. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, as we all know, has been impeached. Mm -hmm. um, 
he is saying that that was actually an incredibly positive thing for him because yeah. it has caused him to have an influx of uh, money coming in. Rolling in $46 million in the final three months of 2019. Uh, I'm telling you, I think people underestimate. I think that the Democrats impeaching him for all the other reasons, forget all the other reasons, a, a distraction to the country, negative, blah, blah, blah. I think it fired up his base yeah. more than we even know. Interesting is uh, Bernie Sanders has raised $35 million in really? the last three months. Mm. Pete Buttigieg did $24 million. I feel like Buttigieg has a chance. I feel like he definitely has momentum. I think... I don't know. I mean, I just don't see him like I see Bernie. Like, you, Bernie just gets more FaceTime. He's just so old. Yeah. And the guy had a heart attack. Yeah. Already. <laughs> I don't know, man. Is Elizabeth Warren cooling off? I, she thought, I saw an article that she's running or slowing down on money. I think she is slowing down on money. Her final uh, numbers of fundraising for the last quarter weren't released when this article came out, so I don't know. Um, but, but I think Buttigieg is definitely heating up, and I think Bernie is still... Biden is still there, too. He he's has crickets. Like 20- I think Biden's mega crickets. He's crickets. He's too out of it, man. I don't know. I think Buttigieg has to make a run. Because I think Bernie's too old. Biden's delirious. Yeah. Sleepy Joe. And the I problem think is... Elizabeth is... is it, Warren is literally bashing everyone that could possibly give her money. If evangelical Christians are the most important voting base in the country, yeah. Buttigieg is gonna lo- it's guaranteeing Trump. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. It's just funny how, you know, we, we talked about that article where diehard Christians will, will, um, will, will, will make up for Trump's mistakes, but they won't do that for they're, Buttigieg. They're not on the YG train yet. Yeah, no, no, They're not no, ready no, to no. apologize. That one hasn't slipped through many religions yet. No. Oh, man. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. But I think that that impeachment um, will have his people out. Yeah. And I don't think, I think no matter what, young people aren't going to go vote. No, young people don't vote. They be, you can barely get a like from a young person on Instagram. You think you're going to vote? I didn't vote last year and I'm probably not going to vote this year. No, people yeah. don't give a shit. You know what's worked in? But, but you also don't complain. What I'm saying is yeah. you don't say a yeah, word true. about any of this shit. Yeah, you don't care. You just want your jewel and your I'm talking about, I told you we're done with that. I'm talking about everyone that's online so yes. outraged for the last three years about Trump being president. Those people aren't going to go vote. They say we start holding these people accountable, straight up. Be like, I want to know that you want to vote. If not, sh- we just shut the fuck up. You should get like a like like a verification badge on Instagram. Yes. I voted. Yeah. If, if you don't have that, you're not allowed to speak. Or speak, but you're a clown. Yeah. You, you know get a clown. You get a clown emoji. Yeah. If you don't vote, you're you a clown. Should. You should get an I Pizza voted clown. tag. No, 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 no. Because I don't, I don't say shit about it. So I don't, I don't get clown then. <laughs> I just didn't do my civic duty. Okay. All right. Well, listen, it's time for us to do a little fundraising. (laughs) Uh, If we got any ads, put them here. Okay. Next up, let's talk about Amazon. Uh, This is a bold move, but I also kind of get it. Mm -hmm. Um, Apparently, there is a group of climate activists at Amazon that Mm -hmm. work at Amazon that were kind of getting like a little outraged about amazon's actual practices and how it's not good for the climate yeah so you know bit of a jam up um not sure how i would handle that situation if i was bezos but he handled it by telling him to shut up or he's gonna fire him yeah what do you think i love it i kind of like it too i think it's ridiculous to sit and work at a company and criticize them just quit or like make change internally the best way you can. And this is the thing that I hate though. Yeah. Is the number one, like number one, no question in my mind that there's anything even comparable. If you're outraged about something, if you don't like something, whatever, don't support it. And that's the best thing you can do. Cause like, for instance, if you don't like jewel and everyone stopped buying jewels, jewel would go out of business. Yeah. That applies to anything. But it's the same as someone's puffing away on a jewel talking about how terrible nicotine is. 
just stop working there and, and be, be the example of someone that said, I'm not going to work for a company that pollutes the climate and yeah. hope that enough people get on board with you. And if they don't, whatever, yeah. you're living the way that you want to live. Yeah. But to sit there and collect a paycheck and yeah, protest. It's a, it's a joke. I mean. You're out of here. You're out of here. Later. Bye. Hope your freaking Uber home is good for the environment. Yeah, you clown. You freak- You'd have a clown emoji on your fucking avatar. Yeah, I just think, I don't you know. You can't take money from somebody and then criticize them. No. It's a joke. I just, man. I, There's way, that, put it like this. I, the person has the right idea. They clearly have to make a Im- better impact on the environment. Yeah. But there's a way to do it that's constructive. And there's a way to do it to just piss off the richest man in the world. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I was Jeff ladder. Bezos, I would go by his desk with a stack of hundreds and slap his face and say, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I just flew in on my G4. Yeah, burning all that fossil fuel. Yeah, I beat it. Yeah. <laughs> I take a stack of cardboard boxes. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I think that, that's a very common thing. Like, I think a lot of people would just, you know, like, it's the same as not voting and complaining about the president. Yeah. It's the same thing. If you're not doing it yourself, what are you, what are you Yeah, because now, if, like, if I was Amazon, I'd hire a private investigator, follow this guy around, and be like, does this guy recycle? Did he separate his recycle so he doesn't soil it? Yeah. If he doesn't, he's polluting the no environment. No way. That guy's going home. In his plastic straw. McDonald's. Plastic straws out the ass. Yeah. And Clown. just vaping, probably. Yeah. What a joke. Okay. Who's ready to close it out with our two mm-hmm. segments? Because now we have two. First one is the classic everyone loves. Winners, losers, content. Who... D was the biggest winner for the first week of 2020. So given that I had a lot of time this week, free time, my biggest winner, which I, you know, we give a hard time on the pod all the time, was Netflix. Well, because you finally watched? I got to sit and watch content. And I think we, we joke about there's a lot of content on there, but the quality of content isn't there. Yep. And... I thought it was incredible. Six like, Underground changed your mind. Six Underground is a work of art. Yeah. Two Popes. Two Popes. I know you saw. You it. watched oh, that's it. Netflix. That was incredible. Is that a reality thing? No, oh, it's uh, a Anthony Hopkins. Oh. Uh, I thought that was literally. I thought it was like a docu series about the new Pope. <laughs> Without the new Pope, but the current Pope. It's essentially. It's not documentary though, right. but it is about the new Pope. Got it. Um, amazing story. I I don't know. I think in this like whole content war like i'll tell you that what felt kind of crickety after the morning show is apple tv nobody has watched anything on apple tv besides the morning show i see ads for the servant and the weird other thing and this other thing and i haven't turned shit on yeah i agree i've only watched the morning show i agree and netflix kind of got me and i was like okay i'll give this a shot give that i'm excited about the uh, kevin hart one yep did you watch the don't fuck with cats no, that's too dark. Nobody wants to watch that shit. Dude, I watched it. Actually, it's really good. It's freaking... No There's one a little to dark watch. part to it. Well, yeah, what I don't do you mean a little dark part to it? Isn't it about a guy who murders people? Yeah, but... The whole thing's dark. But there's an interesting take to it. It's actually good. Like, it's entertaining. I believe you. I'll take your but word it's a, for it. The, the Netflix originals are killing it. Yeah, I think Netflix... And there's... I, I saw a lot of clips of one called You, which I'm yeah. not familiar with. Oh, yeah. I just finished that last two? night, actually. Is I don't good? think you'd like it. It's about you a, it's, won't it's like just, it. I think I think you should I think you should give it a try. It's just kind of weird. I'm not gonna watch it, but I just said that you'll <laughs> watch it the next we- weird long holiday you have. It's that, next 2020 Christmas. <laughs> can't wait for next year. Yeah, but yeah, it's good. I mean, I don't know. It, it got really popular, but um, it's just a little strange. I feel like it's really good for girls. Okay, because it's a lot of like relationship. This guy's super sketchy. You know, it's, it yeah. almost feels like Fifty Shades of Grayish. Okay. It first aired on Lifetime, and then Netflix bought it and did a season two. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my winner is the stock market. Because I I, my, my phone's blowing up with 52-week highs. <laughs> yeah, everything's a 52-week high. Everything's guy. green. Everything, <laughs> what happened? Something happened in China? What, they, what? It's just a trade talk. And so typically this week, most of... Finance is still on vacation. Mm -hmm. So there's like a little liquidity in the market. So whichever way has got a little bit of interest goes that direction. 
and 300 plus points in the Dow record. Apple's at 300. Facebook's at record. Every single company's record high. It's nuts. Nuts. What a way to start the year. Great way to start the year. Trump 2020, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Get on board. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about loser? My loser is Australia. As a whole? Yes. It's on fire? It's burning to the ground. Okay. Um, there is a crazy wild brush fire that, you know, I, feel, I think Australians feel like it's being underreported. I've been seeing a lot about it, but maybe it is in the grand scheme of the world. Yep. Um, 11 million plus acres, uh, 480 million animals expected dead. A shit ton of animals. That is a lot of animals. That's a lot of kangaroos. Yeah, I mean, that's fucking crazy. Jeez. And the air quality in Sydney and all these different places are in these like epically negative levels. Is this some global warming type stuff or what happened? I don't know. I don't know the origin of the fire, so I don't want to speak on it. Yeah. But I think, I think people are just, uh, one of the articles said that the amount of uh, carbon, uh, kind of the carbon pollution created by the fires in the first three days of the year was what they expected Australia to do the whole year. Sheesh. Okay, well, speed up the process, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Damn, okay. I feel like th these, we just, I don't know, we're hearing about fires so much more yeah. lately. Um, my loser is the Ohio State Buckeyes. Big losers. Big losers. So the reason why is because I normally do not pay attention to college football at mm -hmm. all. Um, and full disclosure, it's not like I'm even that big of an Ohio State Buckeyes fan. But yeah. the way that it happened to work in my world was I was home for Christmas. The game was on the day that I was going to the airport. Everyone was so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everyone, everywhere you went was wearing their Ohio State Buc Buckeyes gear. Um, so pumped. And then it worked out perfectly where... Our plane, I know you've experienced this a couple of times, but our plane was in the air while the game was on. Yeah. And so the entire plane was like reacting to the Every, game. Every, because it was it on this TV screens? Yeah. Okay. And then they blew it in such a weird yeah. fashion, right? Where this guy just threw like a perfect yeah. touchdown pass to yeah. the other team. Yeah. Um, and like the whole plane was just pissed. <laughs> you, know? And like, you know, like you're on, it's kind of a long flight. Like it's a five hour flight and, and you, everyone's just kind of like groggy or whatever anyway. And then now all of a sudden everyone's pissed off because the Buckeyes are losers. The, and I just want to say you ruined my flight and you guys are losers. I, there's nothing more I enjoy than watching like diehard sports fans lose. I didn't like it. I love it. I think it's comical how passionate people are for pretty much it's like a, it's like having an imaginary friend like why do you care if this team wins or loses yeah, like, yeah. who cares and i'm and i'm a diehard sports fan like i grew up very passionate i was one of those psychopaths for a long time till i realized like this is so stupid yeah <laughs> i'm like why am i ruining my day over these fucking losers it ruined a whole flight it made the whole flight feel weird <laughs> yeah. have you ever cried over a sporting event cried yeah no cried Okay. I, I I think I shed a tear when LeBron won uh, beat Warriors. I think I did. When he won? That yeah. was worth it. A happy tear. Happy okay. tear. Okay. Yeah. I'm not crying. I'm not crying when they're losing because like eventually I'm like, I didn't lose. They lost. They're right. losers. I mean, if you cry over sports, yeah. you should really look Re into yourself. Yeah. You know? I've seen some people cry. I'm sure you have all those videos. Those videos are online every Sunday. Yeah. I'm sure. People are like smashing their TVs <laughs> and like out. little kids bawling. Well, I I think those most of those people are probably gamblers. So that's a very different perspective. But there's like kids. Yeah. Like if your if your 12 year old is crying and screaming because the Broncos <laughs> lost, like you're parenting bad. You know, make a change. It's not too late. He's 12. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Okay. Uh, what about content recommendations? I know you got a lot of content time in over the over the week. So. I did, but I'm not going to give you any of those recommendations. That's not. That's I did. I, okay, look, it's two popes. It's you know all that shit. Okay, we already talked about. It. All right. What I am going to give you is, so I discovered this company maybe six weeks ago. This this company should be a sponsor of ours. Okay. That's why I'm putting it out into the universe. Okay. Um, one of the things, like having a child, has made me realize is there's things he's going to learn along the way that I wish I learned when I was younger yep. or paid attention at least like uh, an instrument or 
learning another language. So uh, a few months ago, I was reading this app, Duolingo, uh, raised a crop load of money and about making it easier to learn another language. Mm -hmm. So I downloaded it. I never used it. Over the, over the holidays, I was bored. So I literally just started looking through my phone. And I was like, oh, I never tried this app. So I did my first class on Duolingo to learn Spanish again, to like relearn it. So they take, and it says, have you, do you know anything? Or have you, are you starting from scratch? Or are you, I'm like, I have a pretty good comprehension level of like b the most basic conversation. Yep. So I take a, a evaluation test. The experience is so phenomenal, like really fun and engaging. All I have to do is spend five minutes a day uh -huh. on trying to see if I can, you know, learn this language. So my, I take an Uber to work every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to spend my five minute Uber ride and learning Spanish. Spanish. See if it has any impact. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Five minutes is not too much to commit. You're all about setting goals. Why, can we set some sort of goal that like you can do, like... Is That's there something by a certain date that you can do in Spanish on the pot? Okay. Like by July. How about since Spanish people don't care for this holiday, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. I have to do uh, the first five minutes of group chat in yep. Spanish. Okay. There's no way. Why? I don't be, think that's That'd possible. be impressive. If you could do a whole five minutes conversation. But hey, let me just say, if you stick to it, yeah. this will be a really good, because I'm all about like, if you really did something for five minutes every day for a very long time. Does it work? The compounding effect is so big. Yeah. If you actually do five minutes a day, you might be able to do it. So Duolingo needs to sponsor this. Yeah. And their goal should be for us, for me to learn Spanish. Yeah. And then on Cinco de Mayo, it'll be proof if they even have a good product or a shit product. Yeah, okay, so put what this What is out. that? Some What, in the what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what? This is the rendition. Oh that's Spanish. Oh my gosh. That was the most racist thing that's ever been on this podcast. <laughs> and I've said some crazy oh, shit. Oh my God, Pete. It's the a, truth comes out. You know, I'm good you know, at Spanish. the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 just started, but this mic needs to go away. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my, Why do I need to come back? <laughs> gosh, man. My, uh, my content, I have two. The first one is the Kevin Hart documentary on yeah. Netflix. I watched the whole thing. Really good really honest it gave a very like you could also tell he he allowed uh, like he made some bad judgment calls with his career or? with his like in these mishaps with cheating on his wife with the gay tweets with that stuff and even not not the gay tweets themselves but the way he dealt with it he made some bad calls and they showed that okay and so he didn't like try to and i was talking about it downstairs just now i was really surprised that he didn't try to make himself look really look, really good yeah um, so it's a really good documentary, really well done. That's the type of thing I think YouTube should be doing. Yeah. And then the other one, because a lot of our, uh, listeners are entrepreneurs, uh, there's a book that I read called Radical Focus by Christina Wadke. And, um, even if a lot of people aren't readers, it was a very short book, like 150 pages, super easy to read. Very good. All this talk that we have about setting goals and all that stuff. Very good for that. So anyone out there who is an entrepreneur or anything even close, manages a team, really? even just for yourself, it's a really easy book to read and everyone should uh, check it out. Have you ever done an audio book? I've never done audio books. Yeah, but I have learned that I don't... Retain the information? Correct. Because reading a book, you have no choice but to focus on what you're reading. Where audio, you can zone off for five minutes, you can check a text, you can whatever, and then you're like, oh shit, a whole chapter just went by. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've never done an audio book. Maybe I'll try it. I have a similar thing to you though. Right now, on my way into work every day, I'm listening, re-listening to uh, Principles by Ray Dalio, but I've already read it multiple times. So you kind of know. Yeah. But anyway, I would suggest reading, but um, whatever. Yeah. Ready for our last segment? Yeah. Pete's an idiot. Yes. Okay. Everyone knows it. Uh, everyone celebrates it. And we love him, but facts are facts. Uh, Pete es stupido. And that is nice. <laughs> Off to a wow, good start. nice Spanish. Pete as muy Pete as bendejo. Uh, <laughs> Pete as puta. Uh, uh, so anyway, so that's why we made a segment called Pete's an Idiot. It happens every Friday. And it's really just Pete's chance to take over the microphone and say, ask, uh, proclaim whatever he wants. Pete, what do you, you got for us? First one of 2020. You get, you get Make it good. A, a or B. 
I have two of them, but I couldn't decide, so pick one. Well, I don't know my options. I don't A or B. You just you don't get. You just got to pick the letter A or the letter B this right is already, now. You're an idiot. This this is the segment. You're a moron. All right, and this we'll is... see you guys next week. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Uh, a, Pete. Oh right, wow. Okay, we picked. Uh, at what age should millennials get married? For me, this is a weird. How old I, are you? Uh, Twenty three. You should get married right now. Well, that's funny because I've had about six <laughs> classmates from high school in the last. Huge six, mistake. Six months get engaged. I'll tell you, it all depends on your uh, life. It depends on where you live. It depends on the life you want to live. It depends on your career. I don't think people take into consideration all the moving parts. I have a, uh, a friend and, uh, who's in his late 40s, and he just broke up with his girlfriend. And I, he told through a mutual friend, and I was like, wow, he just is like cruising into his 50s no desire to get married, no desire to have children. And he all Has he never been married? Never been married. Wow. And, you know, he extremely successful, traveling all over the world all the time. And I think for him, it's like, it will have a uh, severe impact on his life if he does get married and have children. Someone um, I work with today was telling me like half of his friends are divorced uh or half of his brother's friends i forgot and he said that like so many of them are happy divorced and they weren't happy in their marriages and i think i think millennials will be different on divorce because i think previous generations you got married and you're unhappy you just put up with it and you deal with it i think the like even i'll take myself for example like we discuss our problems and we put it all out on the table and we try to find solutions. I couldn't imagine previous generations doing that. You just, oh, we just have to stay together. We have kids. Or like, I think people now feel like they have a choice and they'll be like, you know what? I don't need to be unhappy in this relationship. I'm out of here, which I think is fine. But the problem is, is when you do have children and you do have these different circumstances, you have to take all those things into consideration. But I have this weird feeling that millennial people will deal with marriage better than I think previous generations because they'll actually communicate and talk about their problems because I bet you if the problem is, is some, some problem happened early in your marriage, you didn't deal with it, 20 years go by and you're just resentful and you hate that person. That's what happens in marriages all the time. But I have this hope that I think younger people will figure out marriage. When it comes to the age, it's a formula of all those things. You have to be ready. I mean, you're scootering to work and <laughs> having no pop pods. You are not a husband. <laughs> you are a menace to society. Wait, wait, wait. Just because I drive a scooter to work, I'm not a husband? <laughs> you, yeah, I mean, it, you need to have a transportation if you want to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my girl can take the scooter yeah. wherever we want, okay? I, my, answer's, my, answer's diff- my answer is after 32 before 42 <laughs> wow and i think i have personally never met someone who is truly happy happier because they got married young if that makes sense not saying i've never met anyone who isn't happy who got married young yeah i'm saying happier because you got married young, young. My point is, I think that a lot of the problems that come in rela- come from relationships are from people not being established. They don't even know who they are yet. Yeah. They haven't tried enough things to even know. So you get into a relationship young for whatever reason, because you feel the pressure or whatever happens. And I think that you, as soon as you're faced with a little bit of temptation or a little bit of um, other route, you, you jump at it and you yeah. think it's so great. And I think a lot of people also end up getting divorced and they're either A, happier, because they're like, oh my God, I-, I can live alone. Like, this is great. Yeah. Or you sort of don't really know what you did wrong or where to go next. And I think that with the millennial generation, the same way they talk about like dating, like people, no one's dating anymore. Everyone's just hooking up with each other because there's all these apps. There's all this like constant temptation or, or, a, or thought that like finding a girl or a guy is just so easy. Um, I think that with marriages, that'll be even more tested. And I think if you're not like solid in who you are and what you want and know how to work through problems like an adult, you don't stand a chance yeah. um, getting yeah. married young. I think the biggest challenge of getting married young is FOMO. Like yeah. if you have FOMO as an adult for anything really, and this is just my extreme view, 
is I don't think you're ready to have get married and have kids and do all those types of things. No. Like, I have no mo. You have no mo. You're in bed before the, you're asleep before the yeah, ball drops. Like, that's no mo. <laughs> that's no mo. <laughs> no momentum. <Yeah. laughs> no momentum. But yeah. like, but that's, I got married at like an age, I think I was 36 when I got married. Yeah. I was turning 36. I was a very different mindset. Like, Plus you've I, lived. Like, yeah. You're talking I, about someone born and raised in LA, traveled like crazy. Yeah. Had access to incredible things. Yeah. Think about like if you're in Wisconsin where where Pete's from, you're, you get married at 23, of course you're getting divorced. Yeah. Enough, enough. <laughs> no oh, chance. Jesus. I'm just saying, you look at enough uh, hot girls on Instagram and you're like, I should get out of here. I, there's <laughs> something better for me out there. I've heard about this Tinder so thing. I got I, out of here. The, I got out of there before <laughs> yeah. I got married. Too. Yeah. yeah, and I think you're always wondering, like, what if I move to a big city? What if mm -hmm. I this? What if I that? You have to go try it. At least go move to LA or move to New York. What, if you have any inclination, do that and fail. Yeah. Go back to where you're from and be like, no, I actually like having a normal, stable life. Yeah. But if you're getting into a marriage not sure, if maybe you want to start a business, move somewhere, travel, whatever it is, you're screwed. Yeah. Because you're, you're going to be resentful from the moment you get into it. Your wife or husband might not even do anything wrong. And you're just like, fuck you. You yeah, ruined just, my life. Just take like a guy like Jeff Bezos, for example, in his marriage. Yeah. He probably got married pre-real success. He did. He did, yeah. And then had his children. He's the most powerful. He's ripped. He's rich. And he's like... Check out these dick pics. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, it, to me, it's just... I, it's unfathomable to me what he did, given who he is. But, like, he just never got a chance to enjoy in his mind. Yeah. But I, how many people do you know that have become successful? Oh, yeah. That worked really hard to become successful, never really lived... And now they're losing their mind. Yeah. I know tons of people like that yeah. who are rich and they're going nuts. Yeah. There's a lot. Yes. Okay. That's, those are our thoughts. Wow. Can, that turned out a lot better than they thought it would. There you go, man. I hope you feel good. I hope you, you know what? Just once you figure out transportation, nicotine <laughs> intake, all these different things, <laughs> yeah, then, then come maybe. back to us. We'll tell you if we think you're ready. Yeah. Okay. That's why, you know, for the most part, for you, the answer is you're not ready. I think before 32, you're too young. I think after 42, you're, uh, you're getting there. You're going to be too damn old for your freaking kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you don't want to have, like, back problems while little J Jimmy's trying to, like, learn how to throw <laughs> hey, a football. Hey, Dad, throw me the ball. Yeah, you're like, no. My osteoporosis is <laughs> <My> osteoporosis. <laughs> fired up. Okay, uh, that's it. We went long. We got to work on our time in 2020. <laughs> damn. We should just be a three-hour pod. I was, Jesus. I tried Joe Rogan Joe, over here. Joe Budden episodes. This guy's dropping three pods a week, I think. It's like three hours. Of Rogan's episodes. the same thing. Isn't that's he? all they do. They, they, those guys are making millions of dollars. Yeah. One day, maybe, like I said, by the end of the decade, maybe the tides will turn and this podcast makes us more money than clothing and we can do five-hour podcasts. I don't care. I'll do one hour in English, one hour in Spanish. Whatever. <laughs> by the end of the decade. Yeah. I'll do one hour from cold-ass Saint-Tropez or whatever. <laughs> You'll be in Saint-Tropez freezing. <laughs> guys, I thought it was nice over here. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, have an incredible start of your new year. Uh, have an incredible weekend and we will be back to our complete... Uh, regular scheduled programming next week. We're planning our next live event. We're firing up the newsletters, group-chat.com if you want to subscribe. Group chat pod on Instagram. Thank you guys for the last uh, tail end of the decade and uh, we're ready to soar right into a new one with you. Don't forget about TikTok. Also, TikTok is awesome. Should get, yeah, well, TikTok. What about it? it we're big on TikTok. Oh, Are we're we? Big, we're also big on TikTok. Did you see we just, did you see Charlie D'Amelio? Yeah, I saw. Big TikTok star wearing Young and Reckless. So just wanted to say that we are yeah. now, you know, TikTok, my TikTok dreams have come true. Uh, the biggest <laughs> For star. For Charlie to be wearing wine arm merch. TikTok, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much the pinnacle, right? You tell me what right else. Right now, right. What else can a guy do to try to. I mean, that's, wow. Tie-dye? That's pretty good. Put her in some tie-dye? Yeah. And when I saw it, I was like, wow. I almost like, I was like, and wow, up. that's a kind of a cool shirt. And then I looked closely, I was like, oh, son of a bitch. Yep. Plenty more where that came from, Pete. Starting the year off strong. That's Guys, we'll see go. you next week. <laughs>